Hello and welcome to Daily Cafefe with Carter and Carrie. Today is Tuesday, December 3rd, and Carter is still reporting from an undisclosed vacation location. Vacation location? A vacation location. Yeah, I like the vacation location. It's good. Uh, it's colder than where than California, but it's good. Um, I'm going to try and be mellow again today, but we'll see. You liked it. I don't know if it worked, but uh, I was mellow yesterday. Yeah. People commented on it. They commented on my mellowness. I think, you know, when I do the show at home, I'm standing. And uh, I think standing gives you, like, a little bit different energy. Like, I kind of feel like I need to be moving and I'm less patient. But when I'm just, like, sitting in a chair drinking tea, it's like, eh. You we can have dead air. A chair that you can sit in when you do it at home. Well, I have a chair I could sit. I could sit in. I I, <laughs> I do have a chair. <laughs> Carrie, sometimes you're so brilliant. <laughs> you need to get. I can a sit chair. in a chair. <laughs> you reminded me of Parker Posey in um, Waiting for Guffman when she's like, when she's talking about um, the blizzard. I think she's like. I forget exactly what she says, but there's this long pause and the like the big crescendo of what she's about to describe her big invention is like blizzard. Like she it's like this <laughs> it's, like, it's just this trite obvious thing. Uh, anyway. Oh, um, a good movie. It is a good movie. And so is the other movie you were talking about earlier. I kind of I miss I'm sorry that we that part was off air though. I love that movie. Oh, I was telling Carter about one of my favorite movies is Bringing Up Baby. And he was not... You don't know this, though, Carrie. What? So is mine. It's one of my favorite movies is Bringing Up Baby. That's amazing. I love yeah. that movie. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. It's it's like, it holds up, too. It's hilarious. I laugh out loud at that movie more than I do at most modern comedies. Oh, yeah. The scene where the dog, when, like, he's in the, her bathrobe and the dog is, like, barking and they're trying to have a conversation because the like grandma just figured out what the, or auntie just figured out what the hell was going on and the dog is barking it's just so chaotic that like i i'm in stitches every time during that scene <laughs> like there's just so much chaos okay so guilty confession that scene annoys me more than others just oh really i love that scene bothers me but <laughs> i love i mean even the beginning well the the scene at where she's in his car at the golf course is hilarious yes. to me. Yes. I just die laughing every time. And then the scene where um, they're at the club afterwards, and yes, <laughs> her dress rips. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, it's so it's so good. The dialogue is so good, and the part where um, after they go, she takes convinces him to go, and and she's throwing rocks at Mr. Peabody's window, and his <laughs> yes. friend, and then the car, and he's talking about how he's. She's like, "It's gonna be okay. We'll do this." He's like, "No." I'm going to go by myself without you. She's like, without me? Says, yes, without you and definitely without you. Without you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it is really good. I, I think the thing I like about the dog barking scene, because I do get the annoyance, but I like that there was the, that the director was just like, screw it. We're going to leave the dog barking this entire time so that you feel how annoying it is layered on top of everything else that's going on, which is actually you know, needs to be resolved. Uh, there's this annoying dog. I don't know. Anyway, that's not what we're supposed to talk about for Kofefi today, Carrie. We're not supposed to talk about bringing up baby, but it is a great movie. I'm just curious because I watched it. I showed it to um, my gentleman caller. and <laughs> <laughs> You know, just because the movie's black and white, you don't have to call him your gentleman caller. <laughs> I call him that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're Carrie Grant. <laughs> I showed it, I showed it to him, and he hadn't seen it before, and it was really funny watching it with somebody who hadn't seen it before, and he mm -hmm. was getting really frustrated. With, he's like, I hate her. I can't stand it. <laughs> and I'm just wondering, when you watch it the first time, if anybody who's watching it in the comments, if you've seen, if you've seen Bringing It Baby, tell, did you, do you like her character or not? I think her character's hilarious, but then I was thinking, yeah, the first time I saw it, I might have hated her. Oh, she's super annoying. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But you have to like, you have to like. It's it's an it's a movie, so you know she steals his car, 
right? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, she's really, really annoying. Uh, but, you know, they do it in a way where, in, like, in real life, if she stole your car, it would be a serious thing. But they do it in a way where everything's kind of light and, like, everything gets resolved very easily. Um, so she's, she ends up just being mildly annoying instead of, like, actually criminal. Um, but, yeah, it's... it's uh... He said uh, he couldn't stand her and that... Um... And that, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? He just passed, no, he didn't just pass away, but the anniversary of his death was Cary Grant. Cary Grant, yeah. he was like, and he, his character's an idiot. And the only straight man in this whole movie is the leopard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, a, it is a weird, they do have a weird um, stereotype, right? He's like the, the very studious uh, scientist, but reserved, never has any fun. Uh, kind of stereotype. A little, yes, bumbling. Um, definitely bumbling, but uh, especially with around her, he's extra bumbling. Um, and then, and she's just like, kind of the stereotypical wild and crazy. Uh, I don't know. Floozy. Yeah, like I was gonna say ray of sunshine, but floozy is fine. But just you know, she's like, let's have fun. Let's do fun things. Let's. You know, uh, let's party. Anyway, okay, we have anyway, something much on. more serious to talk about today. Okay, okay. Uh, and it's actually disturbing and sad to talk about. So maybe it's good that we started with something light. Um, yes. You showed this to me, Carrie. You want to you wanna introduce this? Yeah, so I saw some people talk, more than a few people talking about this on social media, on Twitter. And I looked at it, uh, into it. And it's a Newsweek. Actually, one of the tweets that I thought was best... Um, was, let's see if I can share this one. Mm -hmm. This guy, Luke Rosiak, he says, can you imagine if your job was to summarize a long paper for thousands of people and you turned in your assignment to your boss without even reading the whole paper? That's every journalist writing about studies. They don't care what the method methodology is, and they don't care if it's true. That's correct. Yeah, we mentioned that yesterday, yeah. Yeah, so, and they're talking about specifically this Newsweek article, which Lauren Chen had something great to say, too. She said, uh, excuse me, she said, whites don't actually face any disadvantages. So it must be their racism that's driving them to high suicide levels. I mean, essentially, that's what this article is, is it's talking about the rising death rates among white Americans and how it must be caused by their own racist beliefs. I mean, it's yeah. kind of crazy when you state it that plainly, but that's what it is. And one third, another, uh, a third tweet, which I saw was Clay um, Routledge, is that how you say his name? He says, I no took idea. a look at the research paper as I was curious how they measured the perceived threat which isn't detailed in the media coverage. Here it is, quote, we use the change in share of Republican voters in a county as an indicator of change in perceived racial threat. That's it. Yes. That's it. Okay. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> but they get a lot of ink out of uh, white people's racist perceived racial threat. And, um, you know, here's the, here's the Newsweek headline. Uh, Rising death rates among white Americans linked to perceived threat to their dominant social status, study shows. So this person just runs this as a headline. And yep. I, 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 um, the paper titled Growing Sense of Social Status Threat and con, how do you say that word again? Concomitant. Concomitant deaths of despair among whites highlights this population health phenomenon that has been unfolding for the past two decades. So it's like they finally are paying attention to the rising um, death rates and the rising suicide rates, which they've been ignoring for a few years. They've been ignoring this for a few years. And when they have talked about it, I've seen SJWs um, write gleeful op-eds about it, like sort of celebrating yep. it, happy, happy that this is hurting the white community. Um, so let's can we go over what actually is happening with people so um actually i'll share my screen for a second um i'll share this is from the paper uh, and this is a real thing they didn't make this up um so there is uh 
generally, um, you see, you start to see declining mortality. So they're not talking about life expectancy. When they talk about mortality, they're talking about working age people from the ages of 25 to 54. Um, and they're breaking it down by race. And they're saying that um, for the past, you know, several years, um, you know, normally you see you see mortality rates as as standard of living increases. You see mortality rates decline, and you are seeing mortality rates decline in every other group. And actually, they have been declining for whites until recently, at which point uh, the mortality rates for working age whites started to increase. And they broke it down, you know, here in this thing we're looking at, they broke it down in in different age ranges. But you see, from twenty five to twenty nine. 30 to 34, 35 to 39, right? 40 to 44, 45 to 49, and then 50 to 54. All of them, it's rising. Some of them, it's rising faster. And they also broke it down based on education. So people with high school diploma or less, it's rising the fastest. People with some college, it's rising, but not as fast. People with a bachelor's degree, it's basically flat for most of the groups. Um, so bachelor's degree or above. So it's not really rising that much with, with higher education. Um, however, it's not falling as much as higher education is, uh, like the, the, the other groups in other categories. So like if you look at Hispanics or blacks who have bachelors or more, their mortality rates are falling and whites are kind of holding steady. So, um, that's not actually true for Hispanics. I looked at the data they had. Hispanics actually look kind of similar for their higher education stuff, but blacks, it's falling. So this is a real, this is a real issue um, yes, social justice warriors are gleeful about this issue, but researchers um, are a little bit perplexed because it is an anomaly. You don't normally see um, you don't normally see something like this. So there's been a lot of theories as to why this is happening, um, and you know a lot of them are centered around economics, uh, that kind of thing. But this paper, as you correctly point out, um, in fact, let's we can even find. Um, this is the problem with SJWs in mm -hmm. so-called in science, right? This is a problem with activists in science. They go in and say, we're going to look at um, the number of, Rep what was it? The, the share of Republicans who are winning races. Am I getting that right? No, this, th no, these are for this study. We're going to look at the, what was it? We're going to look at the share of Republicans. The, yeah, so the, so they they try and justify this. So this is a this is inter, this is kind of there's a couple nuances here. First of all, the mortality rate for women is rising higher than men, which they don't really address in here. Um, I have some theories about this, but basically what they do is they say, okay, well, um, we're going to uh, we're going to try and rule out other general malaise factors, right? So they try and rule out things like median income falling and that kind of stuff. So they try and rule out other malaise. And then their conclusion is, well, if it's not other malaise, it must be uh, that they feel that their social status is threatened. And the reason that how they justify this, I'll show you their justification. It's in the appendix. They justify the Republican stuff using this data. Let me let me share it. Um, but but it, so that I'm characterizing it right, they're looking at an increase in share of Republican voters, not not people elected, but voters. Voters, yeah. Saying that that's, that is what, that's how they're measuring uh, white people's discontent with perceived racial threat. Yeah, it's voters. And so they're starting with uh, the premise that, um, they're starting with the premise that if you vote Republican, the reason to vote Republican is that you are, uh, that race is somehow like you're somehow racist or that you're somehow race conscious like that's, that's the a reason false to vote Republican, i'm sorry right? i have to emote here carter that is a faulty premise from the beginning obviously yes. that's messed up that makes me so mad well but they try and they try and justify it so here's what they do to justify it so they they have um they they find correlations among things that they can claim are race related um, to to specifically hear a preference for Trump. So they, they're very anti-Trump in this paper. They they basically talk about how Trump obviously used racist rhetoric and blah, blah, blah. So right? how do so, they explain black Trump voters? 
Right. They don't. They don't. They don't mention black Trump voters. Also, in the section where there's conflict of interests, I think a study like this, a conflict of interest that I would expect to be disclosed. Now, obviously, probably technically this doesn't count, but I think a study like this, a con- conflict of interest, should be none of the authors identify as Republican. None of the author, like the authors, are all left wing. So that's a conflict based on how you look at this data. But so that they did was they took this chart. And they said they, they looked at different things. Um, the, if you think the American way, if you answer yes, do you think the American way of life is threatened? That correlates high with voting for Trump. So, but they what they do is they look at that and they say, okay, well, American way of life threatened. That's that's code for our the social status of whites is a pro, like they look at all <laughs> these things as right. So, support for isolationism. That's code for you know worried about status as a white. Support for international trade, national superiority. So, like, straight up patriotism. That's right? crazy. So, and by the way, anecdotally, I'll just say, we did a civility dinner where we went around the table and everybody told why they thought Trump won. And yeah. one of my friends who, who's black, and he voted for Obama once. He did not vote for him the second time. <coughs> and then he voted for Trump. Yep. All of his reasons were reasons that were above my head. It was all about isolationism. It was all about national security. It's what you're t- talking about here. It's all these global reasons. Is, yeah. that, so, is that his fear of losing his white status? He's not even white. Right. So, so what they do is they correlate this kind of thing. So, in fact, they even said in the paper, there's even a, fr- a line in the paper about uh, how make America great again is a clear racial dog whistle. Right. Uh, they don't use the phrase dog whistle, but um, – so they they perceive republicanism and and supporting what what normal people might call kind of traditional American stances like, um, hey, you know, uh, we should stay out of foreign stay out of foreign entanglements or our country is great or whatever it is like we should make like patriotism is is whites worried about their social status that that's that's their assumption here. Um, and then they go on with a lot of math to demonstrate that um, general economic malaise, in their words, does not explain the um, does not explain the the deaths. So these deaths, by the way, just to, to be clear about the mortality, it's suicide, but it's also stress related stuff. So when you're um, your system, and I think they talk about this in the paper, although I skipped over that part because uh, I already knew it. Um, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong about what they say in the paper, but this is my understanding. Um, cortisol, so stress hormones are useful in emergency situations. So evolutionarily, you have stress hormones because um, they help you, you know, great feats of strength or better endurance to, to run or fight or whatever. So you, you get a, your body gets an injection of you know, cortisol or whatever, um, and you, you can perform uh, abnormally well in order to get yourself out of whatever hairy situation you're in. In modern life, though, we're not ever being chased by tigers, uh, not normally. And so what happens, though, is we have a lot of little daily stresses, and those daily stresses are giving us cortisol. And our body's not uh, – our body didn't evolve to be able to deal with constant cortisol levels in our in our blood, constant low-level cortisol. We weren't supposed to have – we were supposed to have like, basically none and then injections of – like, you know, shots of it once in a while when there was a threat. And so instead we have all these low-level cortisol, and that, you know – that it's a it's a stress hormone. There's probably other stress hormones, but that's one of the things that leads to uh, a lot of health conditions. And so they're they're basically saying, I think correctly, that this more uh, mortality can be related to uh, kind of increased psychological stress. So there's that that does manifest in suicide. It also manifests in like drinking deaths or opioid deaths or general stress related health problems. So that's their that's their premise here, and then they're like, okay, well, well not that that's their their ex, that's their expectation, which I think is correct. Like that's probably true about the mor- mortality, and then they go and they say, okay, well, why is it happening among whites, and as opposed to other people, is it general economic malaise? The only other explanation is um, that it could be this racial thing. This, this, they're worried about their social status, even though their social status has not been affected. Um, we, we demonstrate, right? By the way, you're saying that's what they're, they are saying, not what you're yeah. saying, because that's, yeah, that's not the only saying. other explanation. No, that's, r- of that's, course not. Right. Of that's course retarded. Not. Right. So what they do is they say, okay, well, do we have support for this? Well, yes, we do, because look, 
uh, voting for Trump is correlated to um, here. Let me let me pick a, a particularly good one. Uh, voting for Trump is correlated to support for international trade, and obviously that's a racist thing. So, or, or not maybe not support for international trade. It's probably the reverse, right? Or viewing China as an opportunity, or um, the American way of life being threatened. Those are all things that they view as um, obviously race charged issues in some way, and so they decide, okay, we're going to look at Republican voter registration, basically. And like, if that, if that correlates to this, then that, then it must be that whites are feeling like, uh, threatened that their social class is, their social status is threatened. That's, that's their conclusion. But that doesn't make any sense. That's working backwards. That's saying, we're going to look at the number of, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just yelling because this makes me so mad. Yell away. Okay. Okay. They're saying we're going to look at um, if a growing number of Republican voters and take that as evidence of this thing that we haven't proven at all, which is which is oh if right. if there are rising numbers of Republican voters, it's because white people in, in these areas where where white mortality rate is is um, increasing, it's because white people are so racist that they are they're not okay with. Um, you know, with black people being equal to them or with losing any of their so-called white supremacists. There are so many assumed premises in this that are not shared and that they haven't proven. The fact that tr they, they try to say voting for Trump is evidence of racism. Well, they haven't proved that. They stated it as if it's a fact. They stated as if it's a fact that, mm -hmm. that, um, that, that, that white, that white, that these communities have anything like white privilege and power anyway. You're talking about poor what rural white communities that are facing an opioid crisis and you're talking about them losing their perceived power what the f are you talking about yes thank you for bleeping yourself out there um <laughs> yeah so so they they what the method this so a lot of this stuff is like this is the problem with psychology sociology anthropology a lot of these disciplines that are using you know they're using valid statistics they're doing in many cases they're valid survey data like they're they're doing the surveying and the stats correctly but what they're doing is um they're they make a lot of correlation is causation errors right um and they they don't look for third they don't do any really looking for third alternatives so you know carrie when i'm looking at this i'm thinking okay let's assume that they're correct that the general malaise economically is not the reason for this let's assume that there's some psychological stressor that is affecting whites in particular i'm willing to go far that far and say let's let's assume that they are they're right about that i don't know that they are but let's just make that assumption the question you would have to ask immediately is like well what are the possible psychological stressors in the environment and like would have to you'd have to really dig into like what what could there be and and you know this is one of the problems with these kind of you know, fields like this, they're almost unlimited, right? I mean, the number of possible stressors is huge. But I thought of them, immediately, I thought immediately like, okay, well, one thing that is odd to me, I thought as well, um, these mortality rates are higher for women. Why might that be? I thought, well, one thing I would check right away is, do these mortality rates correlate to being, to having children or not? Because women have been told by, and white women specifically have been told by feminism that, um, they don't need to get married and have children at all. And then they get past childbearing age and they get older or whatever, or they, they don't bother to do any of the kind of traditional things that, um, they would have been taught to do in the past. They've been told to be, uh, you know, view men as toxic and don't bother to have kids and focus on your career. We already know that women are more depressed as a result of all this. Well, maybe, maybe maybe a lot of feminist theory is related to at least the higher mortality rate in women. I don't know. Worth studying. It's a, it's another hypothesis, not considered. Then I thought, okay, well, what if you're, imagine you're a white in the 25 to 54 age group and you've got kids and you look at the world and you look at what you're being told in school in social media, uh, what, um, in general mainstream media, what you're being, what your kids are being taught and what you're seeing. I just made a quick list. You're being told, these are all things that you and I have seen, Carrie. We've been, you're being told that whiteness 
inherently is evil. You're being told that the country is founded upon racism. You're told that everything that whites have gotten are ill-gained gotten, uh, they're ill-gained, they're ill-gotten gains, they've been stolen from non-whites. You're told that whites are responsible for all the tragedies in history. You're told that whites are responsible for catastroph catastrophic climate change. You're told that whites should shut up. You're told that, um, I mean, I saw an argument the other day, you, white, they should be shipped to space permanently. Um, we've also seen arguments where whites should be killed. You're told that logic and reason are tools of white oppression, that whites are inherently oppressors. You're told that only whites can be racist, that nothing you do um, against whites counts as racism. So kind of implying that it's okay. You're told, you, you see, and you're told that there will be, there are and will be, or should be higher standards for whites uh, for admissions for college and things like that, that the standards should be lowered for other groups. Um, you're told to stop having white babies. Uh, and as I mentioned, many women did stop having babies. Um, you're basically told to feel guilty and ashamed for being white. And you're supposed to spend your time and energy seeking absolution through works uh, from social justice warriors who will never grant absolution. Now, tell me that that doesn't stress you out. That's your environment that your kids are um, being raised in. It has nothing to do with social standing of whites. Well, and, and also, with, like, it's also, you're being told, again, let's look at who these people are. I, I mean, I'm just thinking of, there's an opioid crisis in my tiny small town. So these mm -hmm. are not people who are sending their kids to college, like Ivy League colleges or anything. Anyway, these are, they're going to trade school. If, they, if anything, they're not, they're not learning this stuff in college. But they are here. Well, you you learn all of this in, in the media. You hear this in. I know. They're not going to college, but they are learning this in the media. These are people who are struggling and who are below. Most of the people, I, I looked at the stats once in my hometown, are below the poverty, or most of the kids, over two thirds of the kids, are being raised below the poverty level. But they turn on the TV and they are being told that they're privileged, that they have white privilege. And, right. and so there's there's a disconnect there. And I, and I, I do believe it's, it's funny to me what hypocrites these elite academics are who go into this with a conclusion and then work backwards, a racist conclusion at that and work mm -hmm. backwards because they want us to believe, uh, first of all, they, they want us to believe there's one answer for everything. And, and you know, we've talked about this before. They never, they never look at multivariant things. They're idiots. There's always more than one reason for something. Um, but they, you know, it's, it must be, it must be. So, so whites uh, are having an increased mortality rate. It must be because of their own racism. It's not because of any, anything, any outside forces against them, but anything culturally that's impacting them. This is very much what I, they, they say they're against victim blaming, but this is a victim blaming thing from the beginning. They don't like the stat. And so they say, how can we change this stat and make it fit our narrative? Which again is that white people are responsible for everything evil, and white people. So white white mortality rates are rising. It must be because of their own inherent evil and racism. Let's do something and work backwards and try to prove that. On the other hand, when you look at transgender suicide rates, which are not in, but but are very high compared to other populations, they want us to believe that that's because of oppression. What else could it be? It's because of oppression. If, if transgender people are, create, are committing suicide at such a high rate compared to all other populations, why could that be? What, and immediately they say oppression in the way that you treat them. Well, they don't yeah. prove that. They just say that's what it is. Why don't they say that about white people? With white people increasing, why don't they immediately say it must be oppression? It must be the way people are treating them. It must be. And I'm not saying that is the one reason. I don't believe in one reason for things, but, but they don't go there because it doesn't fit their narrative. The reason I'm yelling is because they start with an ideology. They start with an ideological framework and they try to make things fit. They try to look at reality and make it fit with their messed up ideology. And if it doesn't fit, they try to twist it. And that's why it, they contradict themselves. Look at the way they talk about the transgender suicide rate and look at the way they're talking about the increase in the white suicide rate and how different it is. They don't say transgender people are offing themselves because of their own internal hatred of people who are not trans. <laughs> like, you know, they're not like putting it on trans people. I love the rant. I thought it was great. <laughs> so mad. Yeah. By the way, take white people out of it. The trans argument is stupid anyway. It doesn't make any sense because if if trans if it's because if suicide rate could easily be said, oh, if you have a high suicide rate, it's because of oppression. Well, then you would see the black community would have a high suicide rate, and they don't. The black the black suicide rate is relatively small. So 
It's not because of a, you can't just look at something and say, oh, oppression. Well, as you correctly point out, yes, it's victim blaming, but um, more importantly, um, it's just about, like you said, it's just about their narrative. It's just about their worldview is all the things that we just talked about in terms of like, whites are responsible for everything evil, whiteness is evil, blah, blah, blah. And so, of course, whites get the blame for this. In fact, not only do whites get the blame for this in the sense of like, oh, it's their own fault, uh, so we can kind of ignore it. Actually, they like they blame them for being racist. Like, oh, it's a perceived, look how racist they are. It's a, they're perce it's a perceived threat to their social status. Um, but it's not actually, there's not actually a threat to their social status. Uh, it's just a perceived, they don't actually explore the question if there is a threat to social status, which is a separate issue. The other thing that I thought was interesting is, um, and I think this is the kind of intersectional mentality also bleeding through, why are they so obsessed with social status? I mean, they're, they're really, for someone who argues that hierarchies are bad, the left is obsessed with hierarchies and social status. I don't we know. know we know why. Yes, yes. Um, that was a rhetorical question. Yeah. But, but they worship power. It's important yes. to them. It is important to them. They want power. That's why they're obsessed with it. They see yes. everything as being about power. And they could be talking about these poor whites with high suicide rates and high opioid addiction rates who are not even looking at the world as a power grab in terms of group status. They don't, they are projecting. It's like, all oh, these whites are looking at their group. Their group of whites is like, they're losing power. It's like, no, you are the one who looks at the world as a group power grab. I'm yep. really, I'm sorry. I'm really angry. It makes me. I'm, I like when you're angry. It's good. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it's, and, and by the way, to support what you're saying about your, your small town and, and the poor whites, like the rates are increasing more, more quickly for the lowest, uh, like high school diploma and less, right? For the college educated, they're kind of flat. So, um, it does, you know, I imagine being told that you're privileged and responsible for everything is a lot more stressful when you're actually unable to pay your bills, right? Um, when you when live you... in a trailer. Right. And you've got privilege, apparently. Right. Right. It's easier to take as a stressor if you're living in a nice house and driving a Tesla and you're told you got privilege. It's like, all right, I guess. Yeah. Who are these people well. who run around? Who are the woke elite SJWs who run around talking about privilege? Well-to-do people. Most right. of whom have sent their kids to elite schools or who have been themselves to elite schools. Right. Well, it's the Peggy McIntosh phenomenon we talked about before. Yeah, right. where did I get brainwashed? Duke University. Then I come home talking about white privilege. What an arrogant little snot. If I had been my grandma, like she should have clocked me. <laughs> like, my grandma worked This is in a, a good one today, Carrie. I, I like your ranting today. My grandma worked in a textile mill. Like she worked on a farm. Every kid had a job. Like every kid had a job. They all took a bath in one bathtub. You know how they talk about don't throw the baby out with the bath water? That's because my my great grandfather would take the bath first and then my great grandma and then the oldest kid. And it would go all the way down the line until they would wash the baby in the bath water. And then they would wash the laundry and mm -hmm. then they would go dump the bath water. This is my grandmother's life growing up. They lived on a farm. They had no, like, and for me to come home and talk about <laughs> your privilege. <laughs> I look back on who I was then and how arrogant, what a snot I was. And it's like, yeah. Anyway, it makes me very angry. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a, uh, you know, this is, this is maybe an example of the um, idea laundering that, again, Peter Bogosian was talking about. This is how they take something that's like, well, their premise is that whites are obsessed with, you know, by the way, they need to have this narrative that whites are uh, obsessed with the perceived threat of losing their social status because it's a way to undermine any critique of the social justice ideology and anything that social justice warriors say. Because um, if we go and critique anything, well, they will turn around and say, well, you're just worried about losing your social status as a white person. That's why you're arguing against me, right? And we don't they have need that. social status. I understand. That's I'm the not other I know, but I'm yelling against that argument. That's the other thing. We don't have it. They talk about us as if we are people from way back when. It's like, what have I had that I'm losing now? Again, they look at us as groups. So it's not, I'm not an individual. I am not carried to them. I represent white people 
from hundreds of years ago and I'm losing what I had hundreds of years ago. I didn't have that. Like, and, and whatever you think that my grandmother had, she didn't have that either. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, Carter, delete that part. No, I like it. You sure? It was great. <laughs> okay. I'm leaving it in, unless you really want me to delete it. I'm leaving no, it in. No, you, your face just looked like you didn't like it. No, <laughs> no I'm just letting it go. Uh, I... No, it was a great it was a great rant. I no, I agree. I'm it is racist and here's the other thing. Imagine imagine this is this is just like again, they have an inability some of them they are the ones who do have the ability to see this and and refuse to because they have bad intent. And then there are the morons who don't have the ability to see it. You could swap out the race here and you could look at scientific studies from, you know, hundreds of years ago, racist studies that they would do about black people right? They would start with a faulty premise and then they would work backwards. I mean, you, there, uh, gosh, I was trying to look one up because I was, uh, oh, there was, there was a bunch about like the shape of the head and this kind of, yeah, there's a ton. Okay. Here's one. Uh, 19th century physician Samuel, Samuel Cartwright, uh, said there was a mental disease that made certain enslaved black people run away. Uh, it was called (laughs) drapeto, drapetomania. He said that black people were naturally submissive and better off under the control of white masters. He believed that those who tried to escape must have been suffering from a mental disorder that could be solved by, quote, whipping the devil out of them, end quote. He claimed that drapetomania could be cured by treating enslaved blacks like children, quote, with care, kindness, attention, and humanity. It's it's starting with a faulty racist premise and then working backwards and trying to use your status as a physician in this this racist guy's case or your status as a scientist in these racist people's case who did this study and trying to work backwards and and then make the make your racist ideology make your racist belief um seem more authoritative like to cloak it in authority because of your your degree or your you know it, and it and it's 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 hogwash there's That's nothing another good one hogwash is another good word by the way from our, our yesterday list of words uh, yes. So as I was saying, we're kind of going back to the point I was trying to make earlier, which is this is, uh, this is idea whitewashing and, or, you know, this is the idea laundering, I guess, is what Peter Bogosian will call it, right? So they're, they, they're doing this, but they, the reason they need to do this is so that even though it's not true, Carrie, people will say, you're only arguing with me because you're, you have a perceived threat of losing your social status, and then they will say, that's science. That's proven. <laughs> right? It's proven that you have a perceived th- threat of losing your social status. So <clears throat> that's why we can ignore your counter arguments. <clears throat> All this is so that they can – you need to marginalize white people. And the way that you marginalize white people <clears throat> here is – you um you portray them as inherently flawed which we've seen already inherently racist inherently evil blah 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 and um and then you can kind of start dismissing everything they say right you come up with a bunch of pathologies you invent a bunch of uh psychological problems and ascribe them to the white race generally and then say well we don't really have to listen to what carrie says because Science has already proven that Carrie is just responding to the perceived loss of social status, which isn't even real, because so she's, like, delusional on top of it, right? Not only is she responding to this thing, which is stupid that for her to respond to, but it's not even real. She's delusional. There's not even a loss of social status. But look at what's at the core of that. What they're really saying, and this is what almost all of their arguments boil down to, is we don't have to listen to that person because that person is white. That's yeah. all it is. The other stuff is... It is all about race. It is all about sex. We don't have to listen to Carter because Carter is a man, period. And, and their ideology, when you argue with these, oh, I'm trying not to name call, I've been name calling enough. When you argue with these zombies who are speaking this nonsense and, and they think they're doing it in the name of anti-racism and anti-sexism. And it's like, look at what you are saying. You are the one in this conversation who is saying, that people should be treated differently, that their opinions should be treated differently, they should be disregarded, um, that you should treat people differently on the basis of race. Are you or are you not saying that? That's what you're saying. 
How do they argue with that? They don't. They don't know what. And then they have to go. And well, they need to dress it up. They need to dress it up in pseudoscientific uh, studies and, and pseudoscientific conclusions, right? So it needs to be dressed up because if they do just say, Carrie, I don't have to listen to you because you're white, that's too obviously racist. So instead, they can say, I don't have to listen to you because, look, science showed that you're just reacting to blah, 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 blah right? Okay. Because you're white. Well, well, we, we don't say that directly. What we say is always we point right. to perceived social status threats from this paper. But I'm saying we have to point out that's what they're doing. That's what they're saying. Because yeah. you're white. Of that's course. why I can do disregard you. That's why I can treat you this way. That's why I can do, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. It could be any other race. Because you're black. Because you're, and they do the same thing. They treat black people differently too. We've talked about this before. They, they won't ask black people where they're from. <laughs> They won't even get to know black people because they're, oh, that's right. Why aren't you asking that person where they're from? Because they're black. <laughs> right. Like, right. like they have, they have, everything they do is based on every, every judgment they make when they meet you is not based on who you are as an individual. They don't treat you as an individual. They can't answer this question. Is your ideology, is it, is it collectivist or individualist? They can't answer that question because then they would have to actually look at what they believe. They don't believe in treating you as an individual. They believe in treating you based on what race you are, what class you are, what sex you are, what religion you are. It is a completely collectivist belief system. It is racist, it is sexist. And then they dress up these studies. But yes, at the end of the day, when you see this crap, all they're saying is white people are, uh, mortality rate is dying <laughs> because they're white people. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and they, because of their own racism. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry, it's funny when you put it that way, but that's what they're saying. <laughs> that's that's what they're saying. Yep. So, look, and you know, I I will I'm going to point out one other thing cuz I don't I don't know if this is in this study very much, but it I'm sure it will be in other studies if it's not al not already. Um they will link, you know, when I when I pulled up this appendix that had um had things like uh support for isolationism or international trade or that kind of stuff and they American way of life and they correlated this to a Trump preference and said that you know Trump preference predicts these things or these things predicted Trump preference um, you know what will happen eventually so if you think about a country that started as predominantly white what will happen eventually the more immigrants that you take in the country who are not white let's say Hispanic if they are coming from regions where the prevailing ideology is not based on enlightenment values, it's not about freedom of speech or freedom of religion or freedom of association or anything like Second Amendment, none of that, none of that. If you import a population who happens to be a particular skin color that's not white, but they also happen to not share all of these core American values, which are which are important, which is you know what this country was founded on. What they will then do is they will they will then start drawing correlations and they'll say, well, look, only white people believe in these things. Only white people believe in free speech. Look at this. Look at these other populations. They don't believe in it. And instead of saying, hey, maybe we should start not we should stop importing people who disagree with the fundamental tenets that this country was built on. What they'll say is, see. The country's racist. All these things are racist. Free speech is racist. Uh, freedom of association is racist. Innocent until proven guilty. Those are racist things because only white people like them, and they're racist. And and we, so we have to get rid of them because they're racist ideas. That's the next step here. I say, which is it's it's uh, historically inaccurate because all of those things are what actually led to us is is what led to equality is what led to progress in this country. We Obviously, but they're not, they don't care about being historically. They don't care about being historic, but we wouldn't have, women wouldn't have the right to vote without freedom of speech and without freedom of assembly. And, you know, black people wouldn't have equality without freedom of speech and the innocent until pr proven guilty. You know, like these things are important for a reason. <laughs> innocent until proven guilty. These are things that minority populations, more than anyone, need, need in a society. Yeah. Minority populations need the assumption of innocence until proven guilty. You don't want the majority being able to say, well, you're, you're guilty and, and, right, and but, using any biases they have against you. The freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, these things are important, especially when you're a minority. 
right? But all those things will be ascribed if they haven't already. They probably have in some PhD thesis dissertations. Uh, all these things will be ascribed to whiteness and and they'll be categorized as evil and only applicable to white populations. And so, and then they're going to be surprised. So after they say all these good things are only white, then they're going to be shocked somehow that a bunch of right wing white people are like, well, then let's just have a white country because I like all these things. <laughs> like that's, that's the next conclusion. And then they're going to be like, see, there's racists. And it's like, all right, well, you kind of <laughs> taught them to be racist. You just told them that those things are only for white people. So they're going to go, well, I like those things. So I guess we should only have white people. Like you're creating, you're creating your problem. Um, which I, they, I, they, they know and they intend this, by the way. They, they, they want that. Carter, there are days when I'm more charitable than others. I'm not in a charitable mood today. I don't know what it is. This, <laughs> I this can study, tell. Oh, it makes me so livid. And I think also because of the arguments I was in with the people, uh, the, the so-called Christians on, on Twitter who are, are upholding this SJW ideology, and it makes me just furious. It's like, this is rank evil. Ra racism and sexism, rank evil. And the fact that the fact that it's being sold to people who believe that they're against those things, and, they, and then the, it turns them into puppets for the very things they think they're against, that's what makes it evil in my mind. It's so sick. And so some days I just, I don't know, I have a short fuse about it because it's, I don't know. Well, people can comment below, but I think they like when you have a short fuse. I kind of like it. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, don't been, apologize. Don't I'm apologize. I'm emotional today, and I've got to go rake leaves. <laughs> all right uh, i feel like that's an invitation to end the show yeah. okay. i gotta go rake leaves <laughs> <sighs> all right well enjoy your leaf raking um maybe it'll maybe it'll be zen for you it'll calm you down um imagine it being like a sand like one of the zen gardens you can you can rake patterns into the leaves I spent four hours yesterday raking and weeding and it's almost done, but there's like a few piles out there left to go. But my whole body, I mean, is, this is what happens when you get older. My whole body that today is like, <laughs> what did you do yesterday? My back, my hands, just from ripping weeds, all of it. It's all of Do you make old people noises now when you like bend down to get something? <laughs> no, in yeah. the morning I just snap, crackle and pop though. Yeah, fair. Well, hey, time marches on. What can you do? All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching and or listening. Please don't forget to share and subscribe on YouTube. And also, you can support us by going to subscribestar.com slash unsafe space, where we, you know, take monetary donations so that uh, we can someday Carrie can quit her job and uh, maybe even hire someone to rake leaves. <laughs> But for now, just just focusing on this, quitting your job and doing this full time would be enough. I think. I don't think I'll hire someone to make leads. Hey, um, <laughs> if you guys truly, um, if you hit like, if you're watching on YouTube, hit like. That helps us. So. Yes. Yes, it does. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good uh, Have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow.